Hey everybody, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well, enjoying beautiful, sunny Florida here myself on the uh, East Coast. I will be uploading this video with my new Nomad Air through Nomad Internet. That giveaway is at the Florida State Fairgrounds. Remember, you gotta come see me on the 19th at 1.30, Tampa, Florida, RV Fairgrounds. Today, we're gonna leave Frida the RV behind. We're gonna get in tater tot the car and we are going to go track a serial killer. Come on with me. Uh, this is actually my very last night here with full hookups here. It's been nice, but I want, I do want to get back to boondocking and there's an event uh, back over towards Tampa that I need to get to after this. So we will be packing it up tomorrow and leaving the coast. Well, for a different coast of Florida. Yeah, but I love having the car to explore. Any of you seen the movie Monster with Charlie's Theron? Uh, it's not called the Fairview Inn anymore, but this is it, room nine. Well, the new owners bought it and for some reason changed the name to Scoot Inn. They chose not to embrace uh, the history of this motel, but room nine would have been right there, which ironically is now room seven for whatever reason, or room nine is listed right there, but that's not the room. It's room seven right there. Let me get her name right here. A, a famous female serial murderer, Aileen Wormos from uh, 1989 to 1990. Yeah, so Aline ended up uh, killing, murdering seven different men in different places here in this area while she stayed in room nine here at this motel. Uh, she later said that all seven cases were self-defense. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. Now, unfortunately, the new owners came in and decided not to embrace the history of this motel. And I, I personally honestly feel like that was a mistake. Maybe I'm wrong, I, I get it. You don't wanna profit off something that was negative, but it happens all the time, you know? So anyway, that's also why they changed the room numbers just to, just to get a fresh start here. But I do feel it's a missed opportunity, uh, but they get a lot of tourists here uh, looking for room nine. Now she was eventually caught here at a bar right down the road, which we're gonna go try to find right now. And here we go, guys, the place where Aileen was caught the last resort biker bar we're gonna go check it out wanted to point out that right outside the bar they still do have an old sign for what was the fairview motel and now is the scoot or whatever but let's go check out the bar wow okay we got a neat little outdoor section here as well as indoor oh my gosh they have a whole tribute to Aline carol wernos Look at this. Here's a picture of her. There's an actual picture of her. Looks like a photo from wherever she worked. Okay. So this is the complete opposite of the motel that won't embrace it. This bar has completely embraced the serial killer. Names of all the victims and where they were from. Some of her aliases, Lee Blachowicz, Blachowicz. Her last meal. Wernos declined the traditional last meal. Yeah, she was eventually executed in, I think, uh, 2002? Yeah, I think 2002 she was executed by the state of Florida. Wow. Look at this bar, guys. This is crazy. And then this is the pool table where she was caught, finally. Right here in this room, exactly. While listening to touch tunes. <laughs> Probably not. I love it out here. Look at the old hearse there with the Ghostbusters logo on it. That's cool. So I met some new subscribers here. Say hi, guys. Hey, what's going from, on? from Texas, and uh, Wesley's going to give us a little inside tour here. Appreciate it, man. You're welcome, tour guide here, Wesley the tour guide. This is a story about the hooker that used to hang out from here. Mm -hmm. She never took anybody from here because this is where she hung out. But she killed seven men that we know of. And I really didn't start looking for her until she killed a retired policeman. Ooh. Then I really started looking for her. Right. And uh, I don't know her. I was in the movie. You gotta watch the movie. Uh, Monster. Monster. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. gotta watch it. Watch the features. But she's from Michigan. I mean, she writes some crazy there. 
Well, you gotta be crazy to kill people. I bet. Yeah. Was she only killing the people that she, that would be uh, her buyers? Or was she just killing other people too? No, just her buyers. Take them out in the woods. Uh, got to where she quit having sex. And then we just kill them, shoot them. She threw the uh, 22 caliber pistol over the bridge right down here. And they found it, the police found it. And yeah, she killed a lot of people. I heard a rumor that uh, some nights she would stay here at the bar too. Is she there? Did. She did? A lot of nights. Oh, lot of nights. okay. Yeah. Yeah. The place is actually haunted. Oh, geez. It is. It's haunted. Sometimes the pool balls drop, jukebox come on, she knocks my beer over. Huh. That's why I got this stand. Wow. She don't knock my beer over no more. <laughs> well, once in a while she does. <laughs> but yeah, there's a song written about this place, too. Actually, a couple of them. Daytona Nights. Mm -hmm. Where can we find that? Well, on the jukebox. I'm playing for <laughs> Oh, you got it on the jukebox. <laughs> there's a song written about this place. <laughs> Daytona Nights. Hank Williams Jr. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that's good. I'll let you know uh, when it's coming up. Okay. Right oh, Cephas. First song on his list. Daytona. I don't think I've ever heard Daytona uh, Nights. We in Daytona. <laughs> no. We in Daytona. You won't get the when he sings about the last resort. Then. I'll tell everybody else to listen to it. Yeah. Daytona Nights. Daytona Nights. Bang. But one more stop here while we're on A1A, the coast of Florida, because it's, it's kind of hard to get to. And uh, I, wanted, I wanted to see the uh, world's second tallest lighthouse here at the Ponce de Leon Inlet, the U.S. Lighthouse Service. And there she be on the other side of those palm trees. Yeah, they got a museum and a gift store here. She stands 175 feet tall. Hall. The second largest in the world. Look, there's people up there at the top. Can you see them? So there are officially 203 steps inside the lighthouse to get to, if you want to go all the way up to the top. After doing the, uh, what was that? That pillar in Astoria, Oregon, that just burned my thighs and it was hot, hot in there. Uh, I'm going to skip going up there for right now, but I do want to check out their gift store because I haven't picked up a magnet since Disney World. Okay, lots and lots of stickers that are cool. I need a magnet. Aww. Oh, cool. I did find the magnets after all, so let me go through here, pick my favorite, and I'll show you. They got a lot to choose from, actually. Okay. Actually, the first one that I grabbed is my favorite. It's three-dimensional. And uh, I like it. Shows the palm tree in there, too. You can get that one. All right, cool. I feel complete getting my magnet. In case you're wondering, the tallest lighthouse in the world is in North Carolina. So I may have to go check that out this spring. Many of the beaches here on this side of Florida are still recovering from the two hurricanes that hit this area. Therefore, it's pretty common to see fences blocking many of the beach access points. Looks like there's a little walking trail. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is gorgeous. This is awesome. Oh yeah. And once again, we've hit a dead end. The beach is closed because of the hurricanes. I, I don't get it because I look out there and I don't see anything. It, just beautiful water, beautiful beaches. There's not even a sign that a hurricane came through here and I don't understand why it's still closed. I just don't get it. Florida is being super careful though. I don't know, maybe the hurricane whipped up some kind of a chemical or something. It's really a bummer. We'll go try Tampa. We'll try Tampa. All right, uh, back here at the RV. I didn't film a whole lot at the bar. I was just really just embracing it and it was just happening live and it was real and it was fun and I met awesome people and met a couple subscribers that follow my channel at the fire ring out back and they have live music and stuff. And I'm like, it sucks that I have to get back. I have some work I have to get done, but I'm probably, probably gonna head back. Got a few other connections possibly for this area, but like I said, I've got to start packing up and getting over to, to Tampa now. So had had a really fun time though. Opie. <laughs> we're supposed to get rid of the Christmas tree. Y you realize it's not Christmas, right? We're, we're supposed to get rid of this, Opie. Yeah, we're supposed to. But you keep sleeping in it, and I don't know what to do. Because you, cause you love it so much. He's, we got to put the Christmas tree away, buddy. <laughs>
All right, you can go ahead and get your sleep. Just go ahead and get your sleep. <laughs> Tara, your brother's still using the Christmas tree bed. I told him he got to put it away. That's what I said. He's not listening. No, he didn't listen very well. Yeah, Dad needs to put the groceries away, huh? Well, I got Daddy Scooby Snacks. Got popcorn and Cheez-Its and, and, and Pringles and all the all the good stuff, did there? Yeah, I did. You're such a good girl. You're such a sweet girl. I sent off your, uh... Oh, we didn't tell them yet. I sent off your stuff. I sent off your DNA. You gotta tell them still. Uh, yeah. So I sent off, uh, Opie and Tara's DNA because I want to know, uh, what their, their breed mixes are and stuff. I... Well, we're probably still three or four weeks away from finding out, but I think Opie might be... Like Munchkin, Maine Coon, and maybe a little bit of Ragdoll. That's what I think. And I think Tara is probably just a short haired domestic American breed. But we're, we're going to find out. All right. Be well, guys. I got to pack up everything, clean up the RV, and then we're heading over to Tampa. I'll cut back in here in a few days. You guys be well. Bye bye.